I believe we have a one-party system in this country called the Big Government Party. There is a Republican branch that likes war and deficits and assaulting civil liberties. There is a Democratic branch that likes welfare and taxes and assaulting commercial liberties. When you look around at all the anti-government rallies from the Tea Parties to the 9-12 events to the various town halls, the obvious message is people are fed up. They're fed up with big government lawmakers expanding their own powers at the expense of individual freedoms and liberties and the sovereignty of the 50 states. These times are almost reminiscent of the turbulent 1960s. I was there. I witnessed firsthand the backlash against the government. And I will tell you, this is the same thing happening again today. The voice of the people is being overlooked and marginalized by politicians in, in D.C. And Americans are fighting back. Will a third party or will civil unrest emerge from all this turmoil? What will Washington do when California goes bankrupt and comes calling? What will the taxpayers in the remaining 49 states do? Joining me now is Gerald Salenti, the director of the Trends Research Institute and one of the world's most regarded trends forecasters. Jerry, always a pleasure, my friend. Welcome back to Freedom Watch. Thank you, Judge. Great being on. So what will happen if California or New Jersey go bankrupt and a Governor Meg Whitman a year from now or Governor Chris Christie go to the president saying, give me 25 or 30 billion Otherwise, I, I can't run police departments. I can't operate bridges. I'll have to shut down highways and schools. It's already happening. Let's look at the number beyond that. When you put all the states together, the budget shortfalls are approaching $200 billion. And then there's all those pensions that they'll never pay, they can never meet. The collapse is underway. And I was there in the 60s as well. And I would say that what's going on now is even greater than what happened in the 60s. Because well, in the 60s, a lot of it was motivated by guys getting drafted that exactly, didn't want to go. Exactly. It was motivated by young people who simply didn't want to go to the war. Uh, right. This put aside is the fact that the draft is unconstitutional and the war was illegal and it was based on a trick perpetrated on us by Lyndon Johnson. The, the, the resistance in the 60s was young people. The resistance today is young people, but it's also suburbanites. It's also middle America. It's also the backbone of this country. It's basically saying to the federal government, enough is enough. That's right. You don't have construction workers now throwing bricks on marches. They're the marchers. This is much bigger, Judge. We've said this over and over again. The second American Revolution has begun. You're going to start seeing more and more protests and, and a lot of demonstrations. So that's how the people are going to uh, vent their anger. And we will see bigger changes coming probably around 2012. We're forecasting a new third party. And you hit it on the nose. They're downplaying this. This is really big. And the mainstream media and the entrenched politicians, I call them the red carpet crowd. You know, everywhere they go, they go in these jumbo jets that are big enough to move a whole city, and every time they arrive somewhere, they have to roll out the red carpet. They're totally detached of the anger, the seething, and, and the revolt going on in this country. We're looking for the third party to emerge in 2012, and it won't be the Tea Party. It'll be bigger. Some people have called this a political game, you know, passing this legislation, not passing this legislation between Democrats and Republicans. I want you to elaborate on that as well. Well, of course it's a political game. As I said, the only thing that they're interested in is saving the too big to fails. The little people could wait for their paychecks. So, they, of course, they're playing it back and forth because when you see who gets the money, both the Republicans and the Democrats are financed by Wall Street. So Main Street could wait their turn. And it is a political football. One will blame the other, the other will blame the other. But in the end, nothing will happen. Very little will happen. And again, you know, there's going to have to be a time when they have to pull the plug on all of these bailouts and all of this stimulus. And when they do, you're going to start seeing the economy 
even on Wall Street, begin to unravel. So are you saying that Americans should consider perhaps third-party candidates? I mean, what is the solution here for, as you said, all those little people who are collecting their unemployment checks? It has to be a third party. The, the, the two-party system isn't, isn't there for the people. They represent the special interests that pay them the most. So what we're forecasting, we're forecasting actually, we're calling it the Internet candidate. We're going to see something we believe, we're forecasting, in 2012 that will really begin to change the system as the way it is now. It can't go on like this with so many people losing so much and so few getting so much. The genesis of a new third party in America. We saw it with the tax protest. That's another element of the. Of it's the a liber mix. That's a libertarian movement. It's again, there's many different elements tied into it. It's, it's it's against big corporate. It's against foreign entanglements. It's against the Fed. It has. A, it's against taxation without representation. So we are going to have a real third party that is going to be a contender with the Republicans and the Democrats. We believe so. And just for a little track record, I came out with a book, Trend Tracking, back in 1988. I'd forecast a new third party, and for some reason I mentioned Ross Perot. We're looking at that same kind of atmosphere, but juiced up to a much higher level, and now the Internet makes it possible to happen. Before we go, I, I know your field is the economy, but any predictions for 2012, who the candidates might be or what the likely outcome uh, will be? You know, it, we're looking for a new candidate. We're calling it the Internet candidate, a lack of a better term. The people are fed up. You hit it on the head. It's a two-headed, two one-party system. We're going to see something come out of the shadows. And it's not going to be about the personality, not a presidential reality show, but actually a candidate built on real platforms and, and principles. Jerry Salenti, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you, Judge.